Hey, what's up guys, welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're talking about old tools. And for old tools, we're gonna be talking about this Bosch 18 volt impact driver wrench, codenamed The Freak. It's been around for quite a bit, and we're gonna to try to see how much are old tools still relevant these days, right? Uh, compared to some of the other tools currently on the market or more popular tools utilized today. So we're gonna go over this tool, but we're not gonna go over it top to bottom, but we will see how it stacks up against some of the other numbers by putting it on the test track. Stick with us. All right, y'all, so this right here is an 18 volt Bosch cordless freak. Um, model number is 182. And the reason they call it the freak is because, you know, the chuck uh, or call it amp, whatever you want to call it, um, you can take pretty much half inch uh, bits and it, or quarter inch uh, hex bits and it can also take half uh, inch um, sockets, right? That's pretty much why they call it the freak. Um, you know, the people at Bosch Marketing, I say this pretty much for every Bosch tool that we've been reviewing on the channel, got to figure out what the code name and how they really want to do the marketing stuff over there, right? This is called the freak. They got a circular saw called the surgeon uh, or a, a miter saw called the surgeon, circular saw called the strong arm. Sure, if you want to go down that front, go with that. But the model number on this one, we're going to go with 182. So we've had this one for quite a bit. Uh, it doesn't really get used that much, and we'll talk about uh, why it didn't get used that much later. But it's one of the ones that we've now since retired to pretty much being in the car for emergency purposes or whatnot. It does an okay job of taking, you know, putting on and off uh, Let's call it small to medium sized tires. If, if you got a like a pretty big truck tire, I don't think this is gonna be for you. Anyways, long story short, um, let's just go ahead and really get right into it. And then um, we'll go ahead and talk, put it on the track and talk about the numbers. Skipping on the marketing height, let's go into just the specs, okay? So this was released, like I said, about seven or eight years ago, and it has, at that time, roughly, quote unquote, the market leader. Um, they said that the maximum speed was about 2,800 RPMs and roughly around 3,200 IPMs, which is impacts per minute. Um, the total length of this is somewhere around uh, 6.2 uh, inches or so. The total torque output, or the maximum total uh, tool power output was 1,600 inch pounds. And I believe at that time, or when this was released, it was, uh, uh, maybe just a hair more than the Gen 2 uh, M18 fuel or something like that. Um, performance of things maybe a little bit differently, you know, uh, depending on which um, marketing hype or whatever you read at the time, it was 1600 or some of it's at 1650, right? So it really depends. But anyways, let's get more into it, right? Um, so this right here, uh, left hand side, you know, and then we don't need to review this, some of this stuff too much, pretty standard. Belt clip here, that belt clip is reversible, just in case you were wondering. Um, on some of the testing clips, you're going to see, you know, it's, it's awkward holding this when you're testing it because there is uh, vent holes right here, and I didn't want to cover those up. So that's there. Um, this left side, nothing too much interesting. There is a lanyard clip on the back. Um, other than that, there's not too much stuff going on here. Pretty standard, comfortable grip, um, like as you would expect in a standard Bosch tool. And and uh, since this was one of the more first generation uh, brushless tools they received or they released, it was um, marketed as EC motor brushless. Nowadays, it's a little bit better, but you know, um, pretty big marketing uh, things on here. So let's go talk about some of the stuff that stands out. This right here has, you know, um, three um, LED lights right here. One, two, three. Um, that's generally the preferred design that I usually like mainly because it illuminates better right here. And it does do that. Uh, some of the other stuff that point out in here, I believe in the manual, it says that it'll illuminate for about 20 seconds in my opinion that was not 20 seconds did you see that how long it turned off or how quickly it turned off that was not 20 seconds so i uh, did want to point that out other stuff going in on here right is trigger response is this is the variable speed trigger the trigger response i would say is okay it's, it's it's okay to good maybe um the trigger performance i would say is a little bit different and we'll get into some of that um in a little bit but uh, the thing that really makes this impact driver special is this part right here the front end like i said right here is a quarter inch uh, hex bit um, call it and then there's right here is the socket adapter okay or really more of a uh, three quarter or a quarter a half inch drive um, anvil socket whatever you want to call it so uh, with that said let's go ahead and show you this is not a quick insert or a quick eject you do have to pull up on the on this collar to engage that right so if i wanted to put it in can't put it in you have to pull up push it in that this came out eight years ago right so we'll give it some forgiveness there okay and then you can you know pretty much use it as a impact driver or for whatever reason you wanted to switch over to driving some lag some bolts or whatever you can take a half inch drive uh socket and put it on there and it fits on there pretty well it actually fits on really well compared to even some of the 
uh, impact wrenches that are on the market. If you look at the play here, there's not a lot of play. This is on there pretty good, right? Uh, granted, this is not a pin detent. This is more of a friction ring type design. Um, it does fit on there pretty well, right? And it's not just even this one. I'll go ahead and try putting another one on there. Different size. See? Pretty good. I, that's one thing I did like about that. Um, but, you know, that's the main thing with that. So with that, um, obviously, you don't have to use to disengage it this uh, collar here. Uh, you can if you did want to, but, you know, sometimes it helps to push up on it and pull at the same time. Otherwise, you just have to pull and it works pretty well. I'm not sure if you notice it there. The other downside of this thing here really was like there was a little bit of play here in terms of, you know, going forward and backwards, like pull out motion. But the slack on it is, you know, pretty tight. So they got some pretty tight tolerances there. Uh, it does have three drive modes here. You know, one, two, three. It does have a button you could use to turn LED lights on and off. But that's what's really going on with that. So now let me talk to you about why I say the trigger response or the performance of it is not so great, right? And that's this is the, primarily the reason why this impact wrench driver did not get used a lot, okay? Um, so we'll go ahead and put, you know, a PH2 drive in here. And then we will go ahead and say we want to take this PH2 uh, out, right? So check this out here. Take this here, put this in. Did you see that? Watch, just check that again. Watch this. You see? Battery is in, triggers pressed no problem, right? I mean, there's a problem, nothing is happening. That's obviously gonna be a problem. Um, so the trigger mechanism also has a good amount of play to it too. Uh, see if we can show you right here. Watch this, uh, I can't show you. Just watch this red part right here, right? Look how much it goes in and sometimes, um, you know, it reacts earlier, sometimes it reacts later. So the trigger response is, you know, once it engages, it gets okay, but getting it to engage has been a little bit of a problem. And when you're doing delicate work or whatnot, you that's something you're gonna care about. If you're just driving like lags and bolts and stuff all day, you're not gonna care about that. But I did wanna point that out, and that's primarily the reason why I technically don't use this that much. Also, it's a little bit big for this purposes. So anyways, um, that's what's really going on with that. And without too much further ado, let's get into the testing, and then we'll come back and look at the numbers.
All right, so we ran um, this IDH182 with a four amp hour battery, uh, core battery, and I'm gonna go ahead and say that is not the one that this came with. It came with a 1.5 amp hour battery, but that battery is long gone, and four amp hour is what we have now. So anyways, long story short, with the four amp hour core battery, um, on the eight inch Timberlock test, first run uh, 9.48, second run 9.18, Third run 9.29, taking or 9.22, taking an average of three runs comes in at 9.29 seconds. Okay, if you if you remember any stuff from the leaderboard, you're gonna know that's pretty slow. Uh, moving on to the medium duty 5 16 by 6 inch lag test. First run 8.68, second run 9.00, third run 8.90. A little bit more consistency there, but taking an average of three runs comes in at 8.86. All right, moving on to the half inch by eight inch lag test, pretty heavy duty test here. Uh, first run 44.33, second run 36.62, third run 36.15. Taking an average of three runs comes in at 39.03 seconds. All right, so the tool weight of you know pretty much this configuration is gonna come in weighing at about three pounds, 9.9 .9 ounces. Um, as we already talked about some of the specs, we need to go over all of that stuff. What you really care about is gonna be the performance number. So the total performance number of this tool configuration comes in at 57.19 seconds, all right? So that means driving an eight inch timber lock, five sixteenths inch lag, and uh, um, a half inch by eight inch lag, it's gonna take you close to about a minute to do three of those tests combined, right? So what does that stack up against, you know, every other tool that we've tested so far on this um, impact driver series, let's call it that. That puts this tool in last place behind the Makita XDT14, which is, you know, the 18 volt LXT with the five amp hour battery. But if you wanna see where it really stacks up on the market, right? So the IDH182 currently in last place with, you know, 57.19 seconds, you could technically take the Milwaukee M18 fuel, you know, 2853 and run pretty much all, like all three of those tests I wanna say at least three times probably before you could even get it done once with this. So there's a huge difference in that. Anyways, what you really also wanna know about is what happens if you put a pro factor, pro core battery on there or core 18 volt, right? In theory, you know, so far we've seen on most of the tests, it always gets more power. Let's see how much that improves uh, the results here. So uh, in that configuration, we ran it with, you know, uh, the eight inch timber lock test. First run, 9.18, second run, 7.90, third run, uh, 8.33. Running and taking an average of three runs comes in at 8.44 seconds. Uh, moving on to the 5 16 inch lag test. Uh, first run, 7.73, second run, 8.72, third run, uh, 9.13. Uh, taking an average of three runs comes in at 8.53 seconds, all right? Moving on to the heavy duty or harder test. Uh, first run, um, 31.15, second run, 27.75, third run, uh, 28.37. Taking an average of three runs comes in at 29.09 seconds. All right, so this configuration, which is the tool with eight amp hour battery, comes in weighing at four pounds, 9.7 ounces, all right? So where does that put this, okay? The total performance score of this configuration comes in at 46.06 seconds, which puts this in second to last place, just above, you know, the four amp hour pack, right? So if you look at those two numbers, let's go take a look at it, right? We got 46 seconds versus 57 seconds. That's the difference of 11 seconds and you'll probably a couple of seconds there, here and there. So it does make a difference if you do use it with, you know, obviously a bigger battery pack. The biggest difference you really see where that comes in is on the heavy duty lag test or the half inch by eight inch lag, as we've seen, similar with all of the other impact duty, or impact driver tests that we've seen so far. This is really more of an impact wrench driver, so you know, still has, uh, still has to obey the same laws of engineering, electronics, and physics. So, um, let's go and talk about those numbers here real quick, again, all right? So the first place, current first place leader is the t Milwaukee Gen 3 Fuel, which is a 2853, and the eight amp hour high output, which has a total performance score of about 19-ish seconds. So that thing is about three times faster than this, right? So if you go back and take a look at, you know, the question we asked in the beginning, are older tools still relevant? So when this came out about seven or eight years ago, um, I'm sure it was probably pretty good, right? We'll probably have to get a Gen 2 
uh, M18 fuel to see how it really stacked up against you know all the other tests that we had so far. But at that time, it was considered really good. But the in, the uh, thing at that time was really uh, the game changer of this was really the driver and the socket in one, right? That way you don't have to carry two tools or two different types of tools. Sure, you could get away with, you know, a driver bit with an adapter to a socket, but most people are gonna know um, those adapters break all the time. We've already broken a lot testing uh, these impact drivers on the channel, but you can get away with that if you did wanna carry something like that, all right? In this case, um, it's, it's a little bit more convenient because, you know, these sockets fit on here pretty well and tolerances are pretty good. So uh, that really answers that. So uh, before we get you know too much ahead of the comments and stuff like that, uh, for this we were able to use uh, these uh, deep socket uh, half inch drive uh, sockets here, and you know on the test it's going to be a little bit different mainly because on the other test we use you know standard size or shorter sockets, so you're going to say oh well it's got to drive a lot less, and that technically is true, but we counteracted that by inserting. Um, what was it, um, foam inside of these sockets. I'll, I think we took a picture of it um, to kind of make the socket depth the same as the other sockets we almost always use. And I'm gonna go ahead and say it worked okay. It wasn't necessarily the best. Um, one of the things that really happens with these sockets under that much testing comes into uh, heat. And obviously heat and foam doesn't work pretty well. So on some of the tests or reverse testing, you'll kind of see, you know, there was a little bit of redo on certain parts. We try to time that stuff out perfectly. Um, but some of the redo num or the reverse numbers, I'm gonna say may not be perfect, right? But the driving four numbers should be closer to uh, what we would expect. So just wanted to put that out there. So let's take this and close the video out. I don't use this tool a lot, uh, mainly because like I said, the trigger response or performance type thing. And yes, it may be a me type thing or whatnot, but we also had an issue where uh, we, we, we have multiple cars, right? So we put, had this in another car um, and then that one had to get repaired or warrantied without having that much usage on it. So that's a little bit of an odd thing. We usually have pretty good uh, luck with Bosch tools and stuff like that in terms of like, you know, it's the kind of tool that'll generally get you home. It'll get the job done, not necessarily with the best shiniest numbers or anything like that. But uh, we did have to warranty another version of or another instance of this impact driver wrench. Anyways, uh, long story short, uh, should you go ahead and buy this tool? Uh, obviously not this one. Uh, maybe there's a newer version that did come out. It's a little bit more compact. It does have, you know, the same, um, freak design with the uh, socket and anvil and that one may be good it's always good to keep something like this in the car if you if you don't have you know really big truck tires um, because it will be able to remove those right so i've generally um, depending on what kind of car you drive you may have to figure out the lug nuts and stuff like that's gonna work for you but answer the question of the one we started with is it still relevant today only you can really answer that i can tell you it'll get the job done it'll probably get the job done about you know as one third or three times longer, right? Depending on what you're doing. If you're just driving, you know, random screws or deck screws, or maybe like three, four, five inch screws, it's not gonna make that much of a difference. But if you're getting into things that are a little bit longer or more heavier duty, yeah, it's gonna make a pretty big difference, right? So um, that's just what we're gonna have. So anyways, like I said, not too many people are probably gonna care about this video because this driver is pretty old, right? But we did wanna see how some of the older tools um, stacked up, right? So hopefully that answers some of the questions. And with nowadays and everything being cordless, um, tools actually change or cycle through a lot more often, right? Back in the older days, I don't know, 15, 20, 30, whatever years ago, when most of the tools were corded, you could probably have one, you know, let's say one circular saw. Um, and that thing would probably last you 20, 15, 10 years or something like that, depending on how well you took care of it, right? Nowadays, with technology and all that stuff built into these cordless tools, you're gonna cycle through stuff more often or just get updated more. So, anyways, hope this video helped you guys out. I'll stop the rambling. Um, if you have any questions in the comments, do in the comments below, and then we'll see you guys next time.